Hello, my name is Myra Kagete. In this video, I'm going to talk about reflexive pronouns and intensive pronouns. Listen carefully because there will be a quiz at the end of the lesson. Myself, yourself, himself, herself, ourselves, yourselves, themselves. These are called reflexive pronouns. Those that end in self are in the singular form. And those that end in selves are in the plural form. Reflexive pronouns are used when we refer back to the subject in the sentence or when we point back to the subject in the sentence. For example, she saw herself in the mirror. The subject in that sentence is she and the reflexive pronoun is herself. Who did she see in the mirror? Herself. Not her mom, not her dad, not her brother or sister, but herself. The reflexive pronoun herself is pointing back to the subject in the sentence, and that is she. So, ang tinutukoy ng herself sa sentence na yan ay she. Ibig sabihin, isang tao lang yung tinutukoy sa sentence na yan. I'll give you some more examples. John gave himself a gift. So, no one gave him a gift but himself. So, we're referring back to the subject in the sentence, which is John. She talks to herself when she's alone. So she talks to herself. We're not talking about another person, but we're referring back to the subject, which is she. So we're talking about one person in this sentence. They finished all the food by themselves. By the way, be careful with themselves versus their selves. Some American dictionaries, including Merriam-Webster Dictionary, state that uh, the word their selves is dialectal. It means that it is acceptable in some regions, it is widely used in some regions, but that is not the standard form. The standard form is themselves. Besides, most grammar books would say that if you use themselves, it could be an indicator of poor English. So if I were you, just use themselves instead of their selves. Usually, we follow the structure by plus a reflexive pronoun. For example, by yourself, by myself, by themselves. By plus a reflexive pronoun means alone. For example, she enjoys being by herself. It means she enjoys being alone. Sam loves traveling by himself. That means Sam enjoys traveling alone. And we don't say by my own, we say by myself or on my own. Pay attention to that, all right, because that is one of the common mistakes of ESL learners. Now, all these reflexive pronouns can also function or act as intensive pronouns. Intensive pronouns are used to put emphasis on the subject in the sentence. So that's the key word, emphasis. Ginagamit ang intensive pronouns para bigyan ng emphasis or i-emphasize or bigyan ng the in yung subject na tinutukoy niya. In some books, intensive pronouns are called emphatic pronouns. So intensive pronouns, emphatic pronouns, they are just the same. An intensive pronoun can be placed or put after the noun or the pronoun that it emphasizes or after the object of the verb. For example, the manager herself spoke to the rude customer. So in this sentence, the word herself is an intensive pronoun. It acts as an intensive pronoun. It emphasizes the subject in the sentence. And what is the subject in the sentence? It's the manager. If you look at the position of herself, it is placed right after the noun that it emphasizes, okay? So the manager herself spoke to the rude customer. It emphasizes that no one but the manager spoke to the rude customer. Walang iba kung hindi yung manager mismo ang kumausap dun sa bastos na customer. So it gives emphasis to the subject. Another example, the florist will deliver the flowers himself. The intensive pronoun himself is placed after the flowers, okay? And the flowers is the object of the verb deliver. The manager will deliver the flowers himself. It emphasizes that no one but the florist will deliver the flowers. Walang ibang magde-deliver ng flowers kung hindi yung florist mismo. 
Now, how do you know if it's a reflexive pronoun or intensive pronoun? It can be an intensive pronoun if you can remove it from the sentence, and the sentence can still make sense. For example, you yourself can do it. Let's try to remove yourself from that sentence. So we will come up with you can do it. See, it still makes sense. Or you can do it yourself. Let's try to remove yourself from that sentence. We will come up with you can do it. Again, it still makes sense. A reflexive pronoun cannot be removed from the sentence because if we remove the reflexive pronoun in your sentence, it will not make sense. For example, she saw herself in the mirror. Let's try to remove herself from that sentence. She saw in the mirror. She saw who? The sentence will not make any sense anymore if you remove herself. Another example: Do you talk to yourself when you're alone? Let's try to remove the word yourself. Do you talk to when you're alone? The sentence is not complete, so it means in that sentence, yourself is a reflexive pronoun. So yun ha malinaw kapag ang pronoun na myself, yourself. Himself, herself, yourselves, ourselves, themselves. I pweding tanggalin sa sentence at magkakaroon pa rin ng malinaw na kahulugan or meaning or sense yung sentence. It means that is an intensive pronoun. Ginagamit lang siyang pang emphasize doon sa sentence or doon sa subject sa ating sentence. Kapag tinanggal naman natin yung mga words na yan at wala ng kahulugan, hindi na kompleto yung sentence. Then most definitely. That is a reflexive pronoun. Now I'm going to give you sentences, and you tell me if the underlined words are reflexive or intensive pronouns. Let's start. Don't forget to click the like button and share this video with your friends. You can also subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't subscribed yet. Thank you so much to Doc Zayven Ivarotabankura for taking care of my teeth. I'll see you again next time. Bye.